everyone. Wayne from the CERN and Earth and Space Center here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at what you can find in the night sky during the month of July. So without much further ado, let us load up our sky simulator software and jump right in and take a look at what we can find throughout this month. So here we are standing in front of the Cernan Earth and Space Center at Triton College in River Grove, Illinois. We have our date set for July 15th, so right in the middle of the month, and our time is set for 10 o'clock at night. It's about an hour and a half after the sun sets, so it's a really great time to go out and take a look. We have a nice moon here over towards the west on this date and quite a few bright stars and nifty objects for us to find. We're looking towards the west, where normally that would be where I tell you to look for Mars, but Mars has now set below the horizon, and it won't be visible again for quite some time. So if you haven't seen it already, go out and take a look if you can. A little bit earlier, you should still be able to spot it, but by 10 o'clock it will have set, and you won't see it for a while. Over here towards the west, we also have a bright star Arcturus right here in the constellation of Boötes, the herdsman. Uh, that is the ice cream cone, as I like to call it, in our spring and summertime skies. It is a springtime constellation, so it will be visible for a little while longer, but it is going to set below the horizon, and then you'll have to wait until next spring to be able to see that one again. But if we turn towards the south, we have quite a few bright stars and shapes for us to find this way. Our summertime stars are making their appearance. Uh, we can start with this shape right here. Uh, it has a very bright orangish looking star. It's called Antares. It looks a quite a lot like Mars, and that's what its name means, is not Mars. So you don't get confused with that planet when they're in the same part of the sky. That is in the constellation of Scorpius, the scorpion, and we can see that entire shape now, including its stinger as it comes around. So there it is. And right next to Scorpius, we have a group of several bright stars. This is Sagittarius, the centaur hunter up there in the sky. I'll bring up the artwork so you can see that. But the important part of Sagittarius for us is actually going to be this shape in the middle, which looks a little bit like a teapot. And that is very useful because we can use the spout of that teapot to point it to something very interesting. If we sort of follow the line of that spout, it will point us right towards the center of the Milky Way galaxy. That is the heart of the galaxy that we live in. It is a bit difficult to see the Milky Way here around Chicagoland because of all of our light pollution, um, but you can use these stars in Sagittarius to know that you're looking right at that Milky Way, and then the cloudy band of the Milky Way is the steam rising out of that teapot. If I get rid of our atmosphere here, you can see it a little bit better. There we go. Now we have the Spout is pointing us right towards the center of the Milky Way, and then that is the steam rising out. So that is one way you can use these stars to look for something that you might not be able to see with just your eyes, but you'll know that you're looking in the right spot. Uh, just above these two, we have Ophiuchus, the serpent bearer, as well as Serpens, the serpent here. Now, Serpens is actually divided into two sections, the head and the tail, and it is being carried by Ophiuchus, the serpent bearer. And we can see that in the artwork here, the head of the snake, and then he's carrying the middle part, and then the tail comes out the other side. So Serpens is the only constellation that is divided into two sections in the northern hemisphere. And then if we keep looking over here towards the west, we have some other bright stars for us to see. Our summer triangle is making its appearance, rising up out of the western skies, and that is made up of three bright stars that are all part of separate constellations. We have the bright star Vega, which is in the constellation of Lyra, the harp. We have the bright star Deneb, which is in the constellation of Cygnus the Swan, which is sometimes called the Northern Cross because the brightest stars of that constellation make up this cross shape that is very recognizable in the skies. And then finally, we have the bright star Altair, which is in the constellation of Aquila the Eagle. And I'll bring up all of the artwork here so we can see all of those shapes. We have the Swan, the Eagle, and the Harp right here. I already mentioned that you won't be able to see Mars in the sky tonight, but you can find a couple of other planets, just not at 10 o'clock. You'll have to stay up a little bit later. I'm going to move our time forward to about midnight. So if you stay up a couple hours later, you'll be able to see both Jupiter and Saturn in our skies here. 
are in the constellations of Capricorn and Aquarius, which aren't particularly bright groups of stars, but these planets will be very bright and very easy to see in that. And if you don't want to stay up until midnight, that's okay. You don't have to. Just give it another month or so, and you'll see them in the earlier evening skies. But those are some of the brightest things that we have in our skies tonight. Well, thank you everyone for joining me to take a look at our July monthly skies. Remember to get out there and take a look at your nighttime skies, but also like and subscribe for more weekly space content. Have a great day.